All right, we're just going to go over some cases now uh, and practice describing the lesions and trying to figure out what kind of tumor they could be. This is just a cartoon which will remind us um, of some of the more common bone tumors and where they like to occur. So earlier we talked about chondroblastomas, which were epiphyseal uh, located lesions. So here we can see on the cartoon, here's a chondroblastoma in its typical location in the epiphysis. Um, other benign bone tumors such as enchondromas, solitary bone cysts, you can see these tend to be centrally located lesions occurring in the metaphysis uh, and the diaphysis. Uh, fibrous dysplasia right here tends to be a diaphysically located uh, lesion. Uh, it tends to be centrally located as well. Things that are common eccentrically located are uh, a non-ossifying fibroma, um, or you could even say this is a slightly cortically based lesion. Um, uh, sometimes I think it's hard to tell. So these are classically eccentrically or cortically based lesions, non-ossifying fibromas. Um, chondroid and mixoid fibromas are, are a rare or benign lesion, and these would be uh, cortically based lesions. Something like a giant cell tumor has a classic location because it originates near the uh, near the physis at the metaphyseal epiphyseal interface and will grow to the articular surface. Uh, they tend to be eccentrically located, and this is a classic location for a giant cell tumor. You shouldn't be thinking of a giant cell tumor, for example, if you have a lesion occurring in the diaphysis of a lung bone. Giant cell tumors just don't occur there. Conversely, uh, you shouldn't be thinking of uh, uh, something like a solitary bone cyst or in the epiphysis, it would be a very unusual location for a, uh, a solitary bone cyst to occur in the epiphysis. All right, so we already saw this case. Uh, this was the uh, chondroblastoma we saw earlier. So really quickly, this is a geographic lytic lesion, narrow zone of transition, non-sclerotic border, which is eccentrically located in the epiphysis and metaphysis of the distal humerus. Harder to see on the a lateral view. This was the chondroblastoma. And remember, chondroblastomas are epiphysially located or epiphysially based lesions. So one of your differentials for an epiphyseal lucent lesion is going to be a chondroblastoma, especially in uh, kids, uh, young adults. That's the age range that these occur in. Here we go. We have a frontal radiograph of the knee. Uh, we've seen this one already. This is a geographic lytic lesion, narrow zone of transition. Uh, I think it has perhaps a slight sclerotic border. Uh, this one is centrally located in the epiphysis and the metaphysis of the proximal tibia. This is just the MR just to show you the, the location of this lesion again. So here it is, geographic lesion. You can see it spanning in from the epiphysis, growing into the metaphysis. Uh, um, fairly narrow zone of transition even on the MR and this one was a Brody's abscess. Um, Brody's abscess are uh, other lesions which tend to be, uh, uh, they can occur anywhere but when you see an epiphyseal based lesion it's certainly one of the things you should think of. Uh, a Brody's abscess, a chondroblastoma, these are going to be typical epiphysially located lesions uh, and this one was a Brody's abscess. Alright so we have our frontal radiograph of the knee here we have a geographic lytic expansile lesion, which has a wide zone of transition. It's destroyed part of the cortex uh, out laterally here. A wide zone of transition, right? You can't see really a nice sharp margin around it, though it is a geographic lesion. Uh, this lesion is in the metaphyseal epiphyseal uh, portion of the distal femur and is eccentrically located. Uh, it goes all the way to the articular surface. So. Geographic lytic lesion, wide zone of transition, non sclerotic border, eccentrically located in the epiphyseal metaphysis of the distal femur. This one has some cortical breakthrough, which is hard to see here. And this was a, uh, an aggressive giant cell tumor in this case. And if you remember, giant cell tumors originate near the uh, physis and will grow to the articular surface and tend to be eccentrically located. So this would be good for a giant cell tumor as well. Other differentials you could think of in this case would be a telangiectatic osteosarcoma. Uh, could look like this as well. And in an adult or somebody uh, older, 50, uh, older than 50, things to keep in mind would be uh, metastasis or a plasmacytoma or multiple myeloma as well. All right, so another knee, frontal radiograph, right? This is a sclerotic lesion. 
geographic uh, wide zone of transition. Hard to tell here because of the, the transition zone, but I think this is fairly centrally located in the metaphysis uh, of the distal femur. Note there's some periosteal reaction right here. We'll get a better shot on the MR. Um, here we just see the extent of the lesion. There's some uh, soft tissue component of this lesion uh, as well too. And this was an osteosarcoma. Uh, osteosarcomas are lesions that love to curve about the knee, so distal femur is a favorite site. Um, there will be geographic lesions, but we'll have scary features about them, such as a wide zone transition, cortical breakthrough, aggressive periosteal reaction. So you see something like this, certainly osteosarcoma uh, is something you want to think about. The MR in this case is really just for staging, just to show us the extent of the tumor. We should be able to say something smart about what we think it is uh, um, based on the radiograph alone. All right, the radiograph, right, radius ulna. Here we have a geographic lytic lesion, which is centrally located in the diaphysis of the distal radius. Obviously, there's a pathological fracture through this one. Um, but here we can see the lesion centrally located, a nice example of a centrally located lesion in the diaphysis. Uh, and this one was a unicameral bone cyst, which had fractured through it, a benign tumor, but a pathological fracture through this lesion. If you remember, unicameral bone cysts are typically centrally located lesions in the diaphysis or metaphysis of the lung bones. Uh, this is an MR, which really just shows us uh, where the lesion is located here in the epiphysis and the metaphysis. Even on the MR, you can see the narrow zone of transition uh, right here uh, of the uh, proximal tibia, which is eccentrically located. So uh, I can't tell you if it's lytic just by looking at the MR, but on the uh, radiograph it was. Um, so this was a geographic lesion, narrow zone of transition, eccentrically located in the proximal epiphysis metaphysis of the tibia. Also note the nice example of fluid fluid levels we see uh, on the sagittal view. Uh, and uh, this was a giant cell tumor. And giant cell tumors are one of the things that will give you fluid fluid levels on an MRI. Other things that will give you a fluid fluid level will be an aneurysmal bone cyst, uh, chondroblastoma, and a telangiectatic osteosarcoma. They'll also give you fluid fluid levels on the MR. You really want to look at the radiograph in this case to uh, describe the features of it. Uh, the MR is just to get a better sense of where uh, where the lesion is located. Uh, and the fluid fluid levels are nice because it gives us another differential we can think about in this case. In this case, this was a giant cell tumor. The typical location arising about the growth plate extending to the articular surface and has fluid fluid levels. Radiograph of the uh, tibia and fibula, geographic, mixed lytic and sclerotic lesion, narrow zone of transition, uh, has a uh, sclerotic border. Uh, this one is cortically based uh, in the diaphysis of the tibia, so really involving the cortex and growing out of the cortex here, right? No nice normal cortex here, nice normal cortex here. So this lesion is growing from the cortex, very kind of long and extensive. Uh, in this case, this was an adamantinoma, which is a rare malignant tumor, which almost always occurs in the tibia and can look very much like a crazy non-ossifying fibroma. Um, so when you see something that looks like a very aggressive or large or kind of crazy looking non-ossifying fibroma in the tibia, uh, it's going to be cortically based. Uh, and you're going to think of a, a adamantinoma because this is actually an aggressive uh, a malignant tumor and needs to be treated as opposed to a non-ossifying fibroma, which you don't need to worry about. Radiograph of the wrist, geographic, lytic lesion, narrow zone of transition, non-sclerotic border, in the epiphysis and in the metaphysis centrally located of the distal ulna. This was a giant cell tumor, another example of a giant cell tumor uh, extending all the way to the articular surface, which is a uh, key for a giant cell tumor. Also note non-sclerotic rim, which is another key for a giant cell tumor. Um, but Geographic lytic lesion, non-sclerotic border, epiphyseal metaphysically located. Hard to tell, but whether it's centrally or eccentrically located because it's just taking up the whole bone. So in this case, you could probably just say centrally located because it's really just involving the whole of the distal ulna here. Radiograph of the shoulder. Here we have a geographic lytic lesion. This lesion is eccentrically located in the epiphysis of the proximal humor 
humerus. It has a narrow zone of transition and a sclerotic border, so a geographic 1A lesion, slow-growing lesion. This is a young patient. It's an epiphyseal lesion. So really, uh, this should be a chondroblastoma. is going to be the one of the thoughts that springs to mind. First of all, it's reasonable to think of, is this a Brody's abscess as well, too? Uh, EG, or Langerhans cell, cell histiocytosis, can occasionally look like this, but it's not common for them to occur in the epiphysis. Um, but it's something to think about. But again, geographic lytic lesion, sclerotic border, epiphyseal location, uh, this is a younger patient, really think about chondroblastoma. So this is a, a nice example of a chondroblastoma. We saw this one earlier, our geographic eccentrically located lytic lesion, narrow zone of transition. Uh, this one ended up being an enchondroma in this case. This lesion really takes up the whole of the of the ul ulna. It's really involving the whole ulna. Notice there is this bowing deformity. So it's, it's still a geographic lesion. It's uh, mixed lytic and sclerotic. It has a narrow zone of transition. It's centrally located in the bone, predominantly in the diaphysis. It probably stops right about here uh, and goes to here, and some of the metaphysis. This classic bowing deformity, you should really think of fibrous dysplasia with this, this kind of mixed geographic uh, lytic and sclerotic lesion with this bowing deformity. Long segment, which is classic of uh, polyostotic fibrous dysplasia. Polyostotic fibrous dysplasia uh, will involve longer segments than the monoostotic fibrous dysplasia, and this is a, a good example of that with this bowing deformity. This is just to show you that uh, we didn't talk about this earlier on, but you can actually have extraskeletal uh, lesions. They're not really juxtacortical, they're just truly extraskeletal hanging out in the soft tissues. Pretty rare. Um, uh, this was an example of an extraskeletal osteosarcoma. I, I don't think you would ever arrive at that uh, diagnosis just by looking at the radiograph. It just happened to, that's what uh, this one happened to be. Oh, there's a lateral view of the knee. Geographic lesion. Narrow zone of transition. This one has a classic chondroid matrix of an enchondroma. Uh, it's centered in the uh, metaphysis of the uh, distal femur. I guess you probably truly want to look on the frontal radiograph to make sure it was centered. Um, I'm not showing you that one, but in this case it was. And this is a typical location and appearance of an enchondroma, is this classic chondroid matrix. This was a uh, chronal MR. Uh, just to show you uh, a nice example of a juxtacortical lesion, very bright on the T2 weighted sequences. This one turned out to be a, a juxtacortical chondroma, um, just to show you what one looked like uh, right here. Really nice example of how it's arising uh, right next to the cortex of the bone, kind of in the periosteum, and then it'll grow under the cortex. So you can say, well, is this a cortically based lesion? I, I think that's fair enough to think about uh, based on this image, but in this case it was a, a juxtacortical uh, chondroma. Another radiograph of the knee, geographic lytic lesion, narrow zone transition, sclerotic border, really occurring right at the epiphyseal metaphyseal junction. There's a part of the tumor on one side, part of the tumor on the other side. Actually, it's not a tumor because in this case, this was a Brody's abscess. Um, but this one is centrally located in the epiphysis metaphysis of the proximal tibia, uh, and this one was a Brody's abscess, as I said. Another view of the knee, geographic expansile lytic lesion uh, involving the epiphysis of the proximal fibula, a narrow zone of transition. This one is centrally located because really there's nothing left of the bone except the tumor, so you can see it's centrally located. Um, this one turned out to be another giant cell tumor. I think an aneurysmal bone cyst would be a reasonable differential to consider in this case. Another humerus. Geographic lytic lesion, non-sclerotic border, centered in the diaphysis of the proximal humerus. This one also has a pathological fracture through it, and here's your fallen fragment sign. So again, pathomomonic for unicameral or solitary bone cyst. So lesions are centered in the diaphysis or sometimes the metaphysis of the, of the lung bones. Uh, and when you see the fallen fragment sign, as you do here, this is classic for unicameral bone cyst or a solitary bone cyst, same thing. Also note this is a young patient, which is the age range these occur in. So. All right, two views of the knee. Uh, really best, I think, to localize it on the uh, lateral view, which shows you this is actually a cortically based lesion, geographic uh, lytic lesion, 
narrow zone of transition has a sclerotic border as you can see on the frontal radiograph um, and this one turned out to be a chondroid myxoid fibroma a rare benign tumor but uh, just an example of a cortically based lesion in this case All right, here's a view of the humerus, uh, and here you see this lesion which is kind of scalloped out part of the cortex of the humerus, and you have this periosteal reaction or tumor matrix itself, uh, in this case, uh, within it. Um, this was a, a juxtacortical chondroma, and this is what they look like. They kind of scallop out the, the cortex. They actually arise kind of in or just beneath the periosteum and will, will kind of grow into the, in the cortex. If you wanted to say this was a cortically-based lesion, uh, I probably wouldn't argue with you too much, but in this case, this was a a juxtacortical uh, chondroma. We saw this one already. This was our metastatic lesion. Uh, so geographic lytic lesion, wide zone of transition, centered in the diaphysis of the fibula with the uh, aggressive periosteal reaction next to it. And this was a metastatic lesion. This is a, a good example of an eccentrically located lesion. Um, so we have two views of the knee. So geographic lytic lesion, narrow zone of transition, sclerotic border, uh, eccentrically located uh, in this case. Uh, and this is a classic appearance of a non-ossifying fibroma. This one's a pretty uh, big one, but this was just a non-ossifying fibroma. It's in the uh, metaphysis and diaphysis of the uh, distal femur. So this is a good location for non-ossifying fibromas to occur. Uh, they're eccentrically located, and they tend to be metaphyseal and diaphyseally based lesions. I wouldn't really think about a non-ossifying fibroma if you see one in the epiphysis. It's just not the right location for them. Fibrosanthoma is another term you'll hear this called. Fibrous cortical defect is an older term. So this was a non-ossifying fibroma or fibrosanthoma.